Welcome to the Expert Talks by Calkine TV. I'm Sage and in today's episode we have a special guest, Mr. Simon Harmer. He's the founder of Thursday. And Thursday for the Curious is a design studio that this creative entrepreneur has imagined and Thursday is a multidisciplinary agency consisting of branding, digital, graphic designing and much more which aims to create clarity for brands and businesses from the strategizing right through to the digital implementation. So keep watching to find out more and excited to bring you live today Mr. Simon Harmer, founder of Thursday. Welcome to the show Simon. Hey Sage, thanks for having me. Thank you and it's only Tuesday so we're in for a bonus treat here <laughs> to find out all about Thursday two days before. So Simon, you've been in the creative industry for about 20 years. Your opinions are obviously going to be valuable for today's show. How has the branding and designing industry transformed throughout these two decades? Yeah, it's a good question. I, I suppose in, in many respects, not a lot has changed because fundamentally, good design, good branding um, will always be the same uh, and it will always have value. Uh, I suppose when I look back, over those 20 years, you'd say the biggest change has been digitization. It's been the internet. It's, you know, when I talk to my kids now and tell them that 20 years ago, the internet wasn't really much and uh, mobile phones weren't really around, they find it hard to believe. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh, so I, I guess fundamentally for us, from a design point of view, it's more about how audiences interact with the brand now. It's uh, everything is digital. So back in the day, uh, when we started, uh, we were designing not necessarily for screens or mobile phones, and that's changed dramatically. And I think the way audiences now uh, interact with brands, if you look at the biggest brands in the world, you know, the Facebooks, the Googles, the Amazons, they're digital first brands. So that's been the biggest change for us, I think, fundamentally. But at its heart, branding and design is, is you know, it, it will always be fundamentally the same. It's the reason that, you know, some brands have been around for well, Coca-Cola is what, 125 years old now and it's still going strong. It's amazing, isn't it? It's just selling that idea to people that the brand will give you what you need. Thank you for sharing that, Simon. Yeah. And I think one of, the, one of the big changes was especially the ratio of a television. We're in 4K now, I think, and before it was 4x3 and all these sorts of changes have happened, including the internet as well. So running a business is, you know, not easy at the best of times. It's a 24 hour job really getting something off the ground. So how can innovating and branding and strategizing help businesses to excel in a saturated market to optimally add value? Yeah, it's a good question. And I think that's probably what I've spent my entire career trying to convince people of is that um, fundamentally design and brand at its heart will add value. Um, and Obviously, I'm going to say that as a creative and as a, a design studio founder, but luckily there's lots of good research there to back me up. Uh, there's a wonderful company organization in the States called the DMI, the Design Management Institute, and they did this fantastic survey over a 10 year period uh, where they tracked what they call design centric com uh, companies, companies that use design at their heart. And they, they monitored them against the, uh, the, 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 the top 500 companies in, in America. And they found they outperformed them by over 200 percent which is phenomenal. And uh, in, in this country, we, we have a wonderful organization called the Design Council, who are always championing design. And they'll tell you that for every uh, pound you spend on design, you'll get 20 pound back. So I'm always telling clients, if you've got 100,000 pounds to spend on design, we can guarantee we'll get 2 million back in revenue. <laughs> so we know that fundamentally at its heart, design adds real value. That That's the key thing, I think. And what you really want from brand particularly is something that's unique and it's compelling for your audience. So I think by using trusting a process and understanding what your audience wants and needs and then making sure that your brand connects and resonates with that audience in a meaningful way will really add value. So trust it at its heart. That's fantastic to hear about the government incentivizing design like that. That's great. It really does give you purpose to do your job well and keep uh, England as a cutting edge leader in the design sector. So the B2B ecosystem is ever expanding as we know. Please share your insights on how one or a business can enhance their B2B marketing skills if you don't mind. 
Yeah, well, it's, it's really interesting, Sage, because um, the, the world of design and creativity that I've been in for 20 years gets very, is very closely aligned with marketing. Um, but I suppose the one thing I always talk to audiences about is that I'm not a marketing expert per se. I, I, I suppose my expertise is in creativity and design. But I, what I have known and what I've seen over the last 20 years is I've worked with marketers. They're, they're our key audience here. So we typically work with marketing directors, with marketing managers and brand managers. And I think what I've seen in those 20 years is some traits that um, I think really add value, if you like, to that person's role. So the people that seem to do really well in their roles are people that firstly, fundamentally, they understand their own brand, they understand how it works, and they understand their marketplace. So uh, the, the sector they're in, but also what their competitors are up to. And the key thing there is they really, really understand their audiences. So they've spoken to them, they, they connect with them regularly and they understand what they need. That's the first thing. The second thing we always think here is it's about trust. So developing a really strong relationship with your agency or your internal team. The best work that we ever produce is with marketers who really trust us as the experts in design and we trust them to know their marketplace. So that's the other thing. I think there's a, to have a real desire to grow and to learn is really important, probably in any industry or in any role. So people are always striving to learn more, to grow, to read, to watch wonderful shows like yours and, and connect with other people in that ecosphere so they're doing more. And finally, once they understand that, it's about sharing that knowledge with others and helping others to grow as well. So those, I think, are the kind of key principles if you're looking to do really well in marketing. That's fantastic. Thank you so much for breaking it down in a nutshell. Now, I understand you're in Winchester and that's close to London, but it's not exactly in London. Is that correct? Yeah, not too far, uh, less than an hour away. Lovely. And so coming from a city or a ge geographical location like that, how does branding and design um, change? Like, do you feel that to create value that you do need to find a way to link the future prospects with the traditions of a place and so people can have something to bond them to values and, and the creation of culture through branding? Yeah, I think... Um Place is really interesting. It's something that we've been thinking about a lot here from a brand point of view that a lot of people look to London as the, the, as the kind of hub for finance, for design and creativity. Mm -hmm. um, but we're one of the things that we're keen to do here at Thursday and have been for a long time is to, to really put Thursday on the map as a, a kind of center for excellence for design, design thinking and creativity. Uh, so that's really important. And I think, you know, I suppose branding at its heart needs to do that uh, and it'd be great if we could rebrand Winchester at some point and, uh, and put that on the map but yeah so um, I think place is important um, but yeah we're, we're a relatively small country compared to you guys so um, you know what's what's probably a trip up the road to London for you is it, it, it could be a bit of a trek for some people. Mm, true well thank you so much for sharing that question aside from the discussion back to the mainline discussion branding and design can be subjective at times so at Thursday how do you ensure that meaning that you provide while branding for the clients holds significance for your target audience please yeah it's a great question Sage I, I think the thing I always come back to and this is quite hard for me because I'm a creative by heart I trained as an illustrator is is process that's the key thing uh, you've got to trust the process you've got to find a process that really works we use a very strong design thinking process here a kind of double diamond process and you know we always talk about the idea that creativity and creatives can kind of be a bit wacky and they go off and it's all right brain stuff and you know coming up with loads of ideas what process does is it kind of hones that in and it gives it real purpose particularly from an audience point of view so what you'll find is that a really strong branding process at its, at its beginning will do lots of insight and research. It will talk to the audiences, it will look at competitors, it will look at the marketplace and it will really understand that first before we then come in on a, on a position, a strong and unique positioning for that brand. So, you know, we might take Calkine and we'll say, okay, what is it about Calkine that's unique? What are all the competitors saying? We'll talk to your audiences and then we'll create this very unique positioning and it's not until that point that we then let the creatives go on it that's when they can do their magic so we know then that everything they're creating is founded in this insight and in this positioning so it has this really strong foundation really strong roots so then when you get to those areas around subjectivity which you can do you know inevitably there'll be somebody in the boardroom who says but i don't even like orange why are we doing this orange and we can go back and say well 
at its heart, you know, th this brand is all about energy and warmth and, you know, connectivity. And, and so orange does feel like the right color in that incident instant, instance. So as long as we have that really strong foundation of insight and discovery, and then a really strong brand position, we know that we can kind of hone in that subjectivity and we know that it's relevant to the audience. That's, that's the key thing, I think, instead of just going straight into creative. Mm. Yeah, fantastic. So setting up your boundaries and limits, but based on evidential data and what your clients needs and wants, exactly. I suppose. Yeah, that's so yeah, fantastic. Thank insight. you for breaking it down for us. So we have to wind up, unfortunately, although we're having a fantastic time having a chat to you today, Simon. Lastly, what are the plans for Thursday? What's in the pipeline for 2022? Oh, thanks. Yeah, it's been a pleasure. We could uh, keep talking, but it, it's getting quite late here now, so they'll probably kick me out soon. <laughs> uh, 2022. Well, do you know, it's been a, it's been a strange couple of years uh, in the UK and, and everywhere, obviously, and the industry as well as a whole. Uh, I have regular uh, monthly meetings with lots of agency owners in the UK, and for some people, it's been very difficult. Um, and, and for some people, you know, particularly the digital agencies, they've really excelled. We do brand and digital here, so we've had a bit of both. I think for us, it's about um, one of the key things is, again, focusing on Winchester, putting Winchester on the map as a center of uh, creative excellence. It's about continuing to doing amazing work for brilliant clients. We have really strong relationships with our clients here. And it's about positivity, I think. I think, you know, we've come out of this pandemic now. Um, let's use design for good. It has uh, such wonderful ways of adding value. Let's see if we can do that all over the world and for all of our clients and all of our staff. And I think also what we're really keen to do is really start to think about key things like sustainability and what design can do to solve problems like that as well. Fantastic. What a great way to close off the discussion. Thank you for your time today, Simon. Really appreciate it. Absolute pleasure. Thank you very much. And if you just joined us, we had an inspiring discussion with Mr. Simon Harmer, the founder of Thursday, a design studio in the UK. Catch the full interview via YouTube at Calkine Media and keep watching Calkine for more live expert talks and market updates. Stay apprised and invest wise with Calkine.